Our own land area here is relatively small, only 50 hectares of arable land. On our best days, we harvested around 800 tons per day within 12 hours. That equates to approximately 66 tons per hour of material effectively reaching the silo on average. And we had 65 tons of equipment compacting the silo. So just with that, we already achieved 100% compaction. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. We are now at the panel of silo number three. This corn silage was harvested in January. One of the most important aspects we prioritized this year, more than in previous years, was compaction. This silo is extremely well compacted to the point that there is considerable resistance in removing the silage. In past years, we focused on producing long fiber, adjusting the chopper to cut at 18 millimeters. For this silo, we tested a shorter cut at 14 millimeters, and we applied significant weight during compaction. Since the silo is 16 meters wide, it's difficult to use many machines simultaneously, but we managed to operate four machines, totaling 65 metric tons of equipment used for compaction. On our best days during the harvest, we were bringing in around 800 metric tons of silage per day over 12 hours, which equals roughly 66 metric tons per hour delivered to the silo. With 65 tons of compaction equipment, we achieved 100% compaction rate. But instead of limiting compaction to 12 hours, we extended it to 15 hours, surpassing even the ideal ratio. The outcome is excellent. A stable, cold, and well-fermented silo sealed around four or five months ago. A density analysis was performed and it measured approximately 870 kilograms per cubic meter, which is considered optimal. Moreover, our removal team is well-trained and instructed to extract the panel uniformly. We recently developed an in-house fork attachment to aid in silage removal, particularly in highly compacted silos like this one. If we were using only a standard bucket loader, the machine would be overstressed or would remove the panel unevenly. This tool has proven very helpful in maintaining our standard of silage removal. Speaking now about our forage production, our own land is quite limited. Only 50 hectares of cultivable area at headquarters. Back in 2018, that was enough to feed our smaller herd of 200 lactating cows. For many years, we followed a double cropping system, planting both main and second season silage on these same 50 hectares. However, to support increased milk production, we began leasing additional nearby land, which improved feed security and forage inventory. Today, we lease 310 additional hectares, primarily for corn and some soybean as part of our crop rotation strategy. All leased fields are close to the farm, simplifying silage logistics. Even so, we rely on a fleet of over 14 trucks to bring all forage to the on-farm silage bunkers. With more land, we now focus exclusively on main season whole plant corn silage for lactating cows. We've gradually increased the cutting height to about 40 to 50 centimeters, aiming to boost starch content. We do not use fermented grain, high moisture corn, snap lage, or reconstituted grain. Instead, we aim to concentrate starch directly through cutting height adjustment during ensiling. In our context, cutting too low reduces starch and would force us to harvest separate dry grain, which adds costs, losses during harvesting, drying, and milling. We used high moisture corn for a while, but compaction and kernel processing remained challenges. We've used snap lage successfully when needed, especially in second crop harvests, to increase dietary starch. But now with robust main season silage stocks, we rely solely on dry corn grids. We apply heavy fertilization rates such as 250 kilograms per hectare of MAP, monoammonium phosphate, 250 kilograms per hectare of potassium chloride, 450 to 480 kilograms per hectare of urea. This has significantly improved forage quality. We previously used soil fertility mapping with one sample per hectare and variable rate fertilization, which brought great results. Today, with more stable soil profiles, we're transitioning to fixed rates, except for potassium chloride, which is still applied at variable rates. We typically plant corn between early and mid-September. All whole plant corn silage is produced in-house, allowing cost control, 
fungicide application, and quality assurance. We had contracted silage services for 12 years, but frequent issues, especially harvest timing, led us to purchase our own self-propelled forage harvester. This was a turning point. Now, we harvest corn at optimal dry matter, between 34 to 37%, ensuring excellent silage. We avoid harvesting during rain or poor conditions, which previously led to soil compaction. The machine has been essential for forage quality, especially in kernel processing. We maintain the equipment in excellent condition, even replacing the kernel processor before breakdowns occur. Aside from whole plant corn silage, we also use a lot of vegetative corn silage from fields harvested for green corn. In our region, many producers sell corn ears, leaving behind the stalks, which we purchase in Ensile. This turns a logistical problem into a valuable forage source, especially for the growing heifers. This material is cheaper than producing our own. It's available year round, allowing us to maintain a robust inventory. Right now in May, we already have enough supply until September of next year. This gives us flexibility to select fields, harvest closer, or negotiate better prices, reducing forage costs. In this crop year, we harvested around 8,500 metric tons of whole plant corn silage. We purposely increased inventory, and our current supply should last until May of next year. We harvest in January, so the silage will ferment for four more months, improving starch availability and overall dietary consistency. Although it ties up capital, this strategy gives us security and quality. We are already purchasing fertilizers in mid-2025 for January 2026 harvest, with usage projected until May 2027. Although this strategy immobilizes significant capital, it provides uniform forage, enhancing herd performance. We use few hybrids, all with similar cycles, so bromatological variation between silos is minimal. We previously saw milk production drop by three to four liters per cow per day due to abrupt changes in silage quality. With this new strategy, cows experience fewer dietary shocks and starch availability improves through longer fermentation. From this year's main season harvest, we produced 8,500 metric tons. And since December, we've also ensled around 5,000 metric tons of vegetative corn silage. This inventory gives us freedom to rotate some areas with soybeans. During the second crop, we focus on grain corn, leaving residue in the field to improve soil structure and microporosity. This year, we also began a new soil management strategy, focusing on compaction reduction. For the first time, we are using a subsoiler with 40 centimeter tine depth and 60 centimeter spacing. The goal is not only to address compaction, but to increase rainwater infiltration. The cheapest irrigation is storing rain in the soil. Though not perfect for decompaction, this practice helps in drought resistance. Given our sloped terrain, we even eliminated some contour terraces, relying on increased infiltration capacity to prevent erosion.